Hey, friendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. Welcome back to Going In Raw. On today's episode, we are talking WWE Crown Jewel and all the things that happened there. We've got a return. We got a new champion. That champion is not, however, LA Knight. Yeah, nah, nah. Nah, nah. Nah, nah. nah. Failed in his effort to take that WWE championship, in his words, away from Roman Reigns. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, you got to know what the actual name of the championship is before you <laughs> compete for it, Larson. I'll be, I'll be serious, I'll be honest. I think it fits with the character of LA Knight. He just calls it WWE Championship. I wonder if anybody has ever endeavored to go up to him and say, hey, by the way, you know, it's the undisputed WWE Universal title. He's all, no, no. That'd be championship. Yeah. Um, I think it's probably the biggest piece of evidence to suggest that Vince McMahon has nothing to do with creative these days because you know he would be livid and probably is oh, yeah. livid that he just refers to it as the WWE championship and yeah. not because like the the few times that he said it, like the full thing, he can't get it right. And half yeah. the time I forget, does the does the undisputed come much. before the universal or not? I don't know how it goes. Anyways, um, so yeah, uh, another Saudi Arabia show in the books. Before we talk about the actual show, I want to say thanks to all the friendos. As you can see down here, if you're watching us on YouTube, I still have the Doctors Without Borders uh, 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 Tiltify campaign that we're running right now. Of course, it's a Saudi Arabia show, so we always do these charity campaigns. We're at $615 now. The link is available uh, in our chat. Sorry, will be available in our chat because I still have to do that. Um, but uh, if you're watching this on demand, then it should be available in the link below. We'll definitely uh, endeavor to put it there. Um, yes. But uh, yeah, thanks to everybody who uh, donated. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, so um, very much so. Very where much did so. you want to start when it comes to Crown Jewel? Uh, I guess we could. St Let's we'll start with this because it's exciting. Um, I thought how it was how it was executed was top notch. Uh, Kyrie saying there's been talk all week about her being back uh, officially with the company. And I believe as PW Insider reported yesterday that she could be as back as soon as today. That turned out to be the case. Yeah. Um, after there was some uh, a bit of friction within damage control between Bailey and, Ky and uh, EO, Kyrie comes to the ring side area and helps EO retain the W Women's Championship, gets the ring with EO. And they start beating up Bianca and then hug while Bailey has to watch on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, like Kyrie looked like a superhero. Yeah, you know, like there's like so like she was cast in a Marvel movie. I know you just you said that on the stream. I'm gonna steal that line because that's what it, that's 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 the presentation. Um, and uh, it's great having her back because she's a phenomenal wrestler. Her and EO have a ton of history together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And. The intrigue now on SmackDown within the women's division, now that she's there, mm -hmm. just picked up significant. It really did. And I love that Michael Cole sold that, you know, uh, uh, Kyrie was jumped out of the WWE by Bayley. Um, I thought that was well done. The intrigue there is awesome. And, you know, you said it a second ago, Kyrie shows up in her return, looks like a superstar. I get the feeling that under Vince McMahon, I had said this during the stream as well, it would have been a weird back. There had been a damage control backstage interview where Kyrie sort of wanders in and then wanders out and Michael Cole be like, who is that? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. They, they, they Triple H has elevated even things like returns or debuts. And we've seen this with Jade Cargill as a debut um, being treated like an absolute star. Mm -hmm. And now Kyrie Sane being treated like she's not like the happy go lucky pirate. She is a killer. Yeah. She showed up and you see how like she's sort of like stealthily slinking away from out of sight of the referee mm -hmm. um, and and just a really great presence that yeah. she had uh, uh, today at Crown Jewel. And yeah, it's like, whoa, how is this going to play out Is Bailey? Are we going to get like a, a, a face turn for Bailey? Because she's clearly, clearly going to get jumped out at some point. And I hope oh, they yeah. do the thing where they milk the tension there where Bailey yeah. tries to play good, but we all know where this is headed. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of intrigue there that I think could be very interesting. Preceded uh, uh, her Kyrie's return was preceded by, you know, a mix up on the outside of the ring. EO accidentally lays out Bailey. And mm -hmm. so, you know, a little bit more there. Was it an accident? Yeah. Was it not an accident? Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, I thought that was, that was a really awesome moment there. Um, Logan Paul. Speaking we of have, accidents or not accidents, 
Yeah. We Not have Logan a... winning, but Santos Escobar putting those brass knuckles on the apron, how he, where he did. Yeah. 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 I don't know about that one. I don't know. That's, that's a good one because again, we see these little clues after their United States championship match, Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar it looked like Santos might've had some things to say to Rey Mysterio, but they were jumped by the street profits. Um, mm-hmm. And now in this situation, Santos taking some some brass knucks seemingly away from Logan Paul, but then putting him back in position for him to get them, like you say, or like you ask, accident or no accident. Regardless, the finish was Logan Paul, uh, while Rey Mysterio was trying to execute a splash, hits him with the right, with the brass knucks, uh, gets the win at the end, says, hey, you know, fair is fair. I got to do what I got to do. And Ray's like, what? You just cheated to win in Logan Paul. Yeah. Holds the new United States Championship. Um, hi, you and I have talked about WWE's the the, the pros and cons uh, from a business perspective of Logan Paul. Obviously, they want the title around for storyline reasons. You brought up the point. I think this is a good one that the U.S. title. You would think similar to the way that so Raw has two very very heavily featured, consistently featured champions um, mm-hmm. in their men's division, the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, with Gunther, who has matches on a regular basis, sometimes mm-hmm. weekly basis. Mm-hmm. Seth Rollins, who defends his title, his part of his story is he wants to keep going and keep going and keep going. Mm-hmm. And over on SmackDown, Roman Reigns, this is probably his last title defense for the year. Yeah. Um. And, and now you've got the United States Championship on a guy who I don't know how much he's going to be around. And he could hold that thing till WrestleMania. You've speculated that he could have it until LA Knight takes it off him. At yeah. WrestleMania, which is an obvious um, or, or a, a, I think a d- definite possibility. Um, however, given that Logan Paul trends sometimes higher, I'm not going to say sometimes, pretty much always trends higher than the brand of WWE. Yeah. It's like Cody selling more merch than the generic WWE merch. Um, Logan Paul is a very high profile uh, influencer, I guess you can call him. Mm hmm. And having that United States championship out and about, you know, where while they're negotiating TV rights for Monday Night Raw um, seems to be the, the direction or is, is the direction they went on. How, how, how often do you think he's going to appear on TV? And do you think this is a good move for WWE as a business? The only downside of it from a business perspective is the fact that he won't be on the show every week. That being said feel like he'll be on enough here we're in the season now where like there's a lot of major shows you got survivor series he'll probably be there he'll be at the rumble he'll probably be at elimination chamber in perth and he'll be at wrestlemania Mm i I, wb has announced anything for a december pay-per-view so ain't missing that one because there's no show then because they had two they're gonna have two this month uh, they could have the Rumble be the only pay per view in January, mm-hmm. um, and then you know then you're on Mania season. Mm-hmm. So, in terms of being involved in pay per views, kind of all of them between now and Mania are kind of must appear shows for him because yeah. they're either they're large stadium shows for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as how often he'll be on TV, a couple times a month maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's on yeah. every other week. You know that's enough to 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 ha- show, have him show up there with the title mm-hmm. on WB programming, but he's gonna be carrying that belt. You'd assume he'd have that on his podcast when he's doing media appearances, yeah. all this type of stuff. He's gonna be carrying that belt everywhere. Yeah, um, and, yeah, and that. Just, let me just you know just to 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 hop on that. That's gonna be seen in more places and to in front of more eyeballs than being on television. I understand yeah. the philosophy yeah. of. We need fights, but they got a lot of rosters and they're telling stories that don't demand titles. So. And here's the thing. If they're really going to a- amp up the intrigue and the tension in the EO damage control storyline, now mm-hmm. that Kyrie's there, and they got some really strong ideas for that story, mm-hmm. that could be the new A story on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So if, if it's, as long as there's like a really good story carrying or the, the, the focus of each brand, at the end of the day, it's the stories that matter, you know? Yeah, yeah. Even when Roman's not on the show, his presence is felt because he's such a, a, a huge aspect of the story they're telling on SmackDown. He can mm-hmm. miss three months of TV, but you still feel like, all right, when Roman comes, he's going to have a lot to say about this and that, and he's not going to be happy about this, and maybe he'll commend Jimmy for this, but he's going to get down on him for this. Yeah, yeah. You know, so 
as long as the stories continue to be good, champs show up, I honestly don't really care. Well, you know, later on this month, of course, we've got Survivor Series, which was mm-hmm. announced as War Games during this show officially with the video package. And that alone is going to be a selling point. Now, it feels like they've teased a couple different things. You can go Judgment Day versus, you know, uh, Cody, Sammy, Jay, maybe Kevin Owens or somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um, You could go that route. You could go that route plus a traditional Survivor Series brand versus brand. Team Aldis, Team Pierce, they've teased that. So you can do that. Um, That sort of sells itself in terms of, we don't need a big title match. We've got Survivor Series. We've got War Games. We can do a lot with that. Now, I don't know. With the Rumble being probably, I would think, the next time Roman Reigns is going to defend that title, because typically that is yeah. you know, yeah. a, a situation of the Royal Rumble. It's a high-profile title match. Um, they could start setting up the next opponent for Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. The big question is, who's that going to be? There's two names that that come to mind, and I don't even necessarily think they're strong names, but they're names. He One is been. AJ Styles because I don't think yeah. he's had. No, he hasn't had a program with Tribal Chief uh, Roman yet. He wait a second. He didn't have like a like a 2020 like right after Roman came back. Was AJ I'll one of the? So. Okay, I'll I thought one of the better matches. AJ was on Raw back then. Okay. Okay. Um. In any event, if that was the case, it's been three years, they could revisit it. Another guy they could revisit is Kevin Owens. He's fresh yeah. on SmackDown. Now, it's been a while since that last man standing match. I think it's been, it'll be two years, I think, at the mm-hmm. Rumble. Mm-hmm. That being said, I mean, it's, that, that's two years. That's a long time. Um, Kevin Owens had been so involved with Bloodline stuff because of the tag reign with Sammy uh, that... I don't know if they'd revisit that just for another Kevin Owens loss. Yeah. But that's a possibility. I'm trying to think. I don't know of any other names. I mean, you Bobby Lashley, maybe. You know, depending on how stuff goes with Jimmy, too. If the idea is that by the time Mania 40 rolls around and the and if they're going to have Cody actually win this time, at that point, you got to think Roman's got to kind of be by himself. Mm hmm. You know, so at some point you're going to have to do something with Roman and Jim. You're going to do something with Roman and Solo. Um, if that's the direction they're going. So that's, you know, whether it be Rumble, because if I would imagine Roman is going to be at Elimination Chamber. It's a huge stadium show. Um, that uh, uh, that might be a direction they could go <laughs> in. Yeah, sorry. Kevin Owens fought Roman at this last year's Royal Rumble. Okay, yeah, I totally forgot about that one. You're right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, forgot about that one. Sorry, sorry, COVID. Um. Anyways, uh, I'm sorry, dude. I interrupted your point because uh, because no, that's fine. I was just done. I was saying it could be, it could be, it could be solo or it could be Jimmy. There's yeah, that's a that's those are possibilities too. There's a long time between now and the Rumble. Yeah, I know, I know, know. I know, I know. So um, let's talk about Roman. Let's talk about Seth and Rhea all successfully defending their titles. Uh, Seth and Drew put on a hell of a match. Uh, Drew only has himself to blame for losing this one. A little too overzealous at the end after Seth kicked out of a, 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 a Claymore, went yeah. for one again. I think he had two attempts trying to hit it again. Uh, perhaps a bit overzealous. End up him eating a pedigree and a stomp to lose. Mm-hmm. Uh, Roman kind of had a light day at the office against L.A. Knight. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, L.A. Knight, I guess you could chalk it up on new to the main event scene. Well, let's do the Drew thing first. Yeah. Because that's terrific. Excuses. That's what Seth says. They're excuses. And you can call them reasons, but in the world of wrestling, a loss is a loss. You know, you got you got to chalk it up. Oh, the bloodline screwed me. Well, you didn't have anything to answer with. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's Seth's point of view. Drew's point of view. I was champion in front of nobody, and I keep on getting screwed out of my opportunities. But this time, it was just him. Yep. There is no, no excuses. No excuses. He took the L. So what do you think will be? Because clearly this is leading to a heel turn. I wonder what the process is going to look like to fully get there. Because Rhea comes up to him afterwards and and, and just gives him a look. She shrugs at him. She's like... 
Should listen to us. The look was everything. You don't need yep. her to say that. Nope. The look was you should have listened to us and you'd be champion right now. Do you see Drew getting involved with Judgment Day? I know you've, you've advocated th- for that. Well, that's why I think it'd be interesting if the fourth man for Team Cody at War Games is Drew McIntyre, because then it puts him in a position where there's a push and pull. Drew's got problems with Cody because he brought Jay there. Jay would be on that team. It's got beef with him. Um, I think it'd just be interesting to see that dynamic play out with Judgment Day there as well. Mm-hmm to really test Drew's alliances. Like, is he going to be good guy Drew? Is he going to, you know, uh, just kind of say, all right, that's just how I'm going to be. Or is he going to actually be successfully recruited by Rhea and at least be enticed by the prospect of of having Judgment Day's help? I mean, one guy looked like an asshole tonight, and that was Damian Priest. Uh, Of course, sort of the the alpha male, if you will, of – Judgment Day. Rhea is the alpha, but he's you know the, the 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 total alpha. But you know, in terms of like the 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 guys, the men involved with you know the the title scene, it would be him because he's Mister Money in the Bank. Yes. Not only did he have that stolen by Sami Zayn, who might actually be Mister Mister Money in the Bank now, uh, because I think JBL had said that you know possession is nine tenths of law or whatever. Yeah. Um. And uh. And then he lost to Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Looks like an asshole, and maybe Rhea Ripley's thinking to herself, you know, uh, I know I, I say that I'm not the leader, but I am the leader. And you know what the leader can do? Leader can decide who is in our crew. And I'd much rather a guy who is a former WWE champion, who is a stud, who has, uh, you know, a, a bone to pick now with multiple people, get this giant Scotsman on our side. We can kick. Damien Priest out and maybe somehow finagle a way to get that briefcase off him and on to Drew maybe I don't know or maybe if the situation now was where Sammy has it and Sammy says you want this back put it up in a match it yeah Damien loses it I mean that's that's all that's all judgment day would need as rationale to kick him out mm-hmm. yeah you know although they'd have to drop the tag titles I guess first because him and Finn are still tag champs yeah, yeah, but boy, he looked bad tonight. And I think it yeah, I I, I, I think it's I don't think it's the, the great thing about it is it doesn't seem like it's one of those things where look, if Vince was still in charge and this exact same thing happened, you and I would both be sitting here, oh man, Vince has buyer's remorse. Yeah. I yeah. think this is a story to position Damian Priest or to attempt to position Damian Priest in a stronger position yeah. as a potential money in the bank guy or a potential yeah. world champion guy. Um, and I have no idea how it's going to work itself out, but um, I'm interested to see, you know, so, what what happens next. Yeah, totally, totally. In the years past, with Vincent Charge, be like, oh, Damian Priest, he's been buried. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and I don't, I don't feel like that's the case. I feel like they're we're in the midst of a story being told. Just wait to see how it kind of plays out. Yeah, feels good. Feels good to be able to talk about intrigue and not, oh God, this guy must have farted near Vince. <laughs> I know, I know, exactly. <laughs> Um, before we get started with our actual review, Larson, would you like to pay some bills? Let's do it. This episode of Going in Raw is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, Steve, mm-hmm. one of the things that, oh, irritates me so much about dealing with anxiety is when I'm in a situation or something that I want to do, something that I should do, or something that I need to do, but this brain inside my head, it just starts going and going and going, and my anxiety goes through the roof. It just makes it extremely difficult difficult to get those things done if I get them done at all. Yeah, man. No, I, I feel you. And I know you know this, but therapy can help you figure out what's holding you back. So you work for yourself rather than against yourself. Yes, I do know that. I have firsthand experience of that. Uh, back in my mid-20s, my anxiety got really, really bad. Really bad. So bad, in fact, that I realized it was getting in the way of me living a productive, happy life. And I needed to go to therapy. It took me a few tries to find someone I felt comfortable talking to, but once I did, I was able to learn the tools I needed to better cope with my anxiety and get me back on track to being a happier, more productive Larson. And if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's completely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. All you got to do to get started is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched up with a licensed therapist, and then you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash raw today to get 10% off your first month. 
That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash raw. And before we uh, get on with our review, I uh, want to bring this up really quick. We got 545 people watching right now. We got probably many more that are going to be watching this uh, as a video on demand on YouTube. And we'd like to ask you a very simple favor. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notify bell. We're trying to reach the number 198,891. It's a palindrome, and we really love when something starts and ends in the same way. Kind of like poop. Or boob. Yes, like poop. Or boo. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so do us a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notify bell. Also, if you're interested in uh, uh, more but better going in raw, we've got Overrun. It's our bonus episode we do uh, every couple of weeks. Uh, we have question threads. We're going to try to get back that to weekly. Yes. We got question threads. We just did one yesterday, too. Uh, yeah. And of course, oh, man, oh, man. The Big Blue Predictions Challenge. Larson, who won the bonus round today at Crown Jewel? Was it Steve hey. here? Let's go, no, Steve you were here. Close. You and I were both in the running, but it was Noah Holt that will go into Week of Champions 3 with a one-point advantage. Listen, one point may not sound like much. It can make all the difference, especially when you have myself. Yeah. You got a flatter, what's the name? Flannelly, Flannelly Dan. Dan. Flannelly, Flannelly Dan. I almost said Flattery Dan. Flannelly Dan. He loves his flannel. Both with cash in opportunities one point can make all the difference so congratulations to noah holt for winning uh the advantage the bonus round of predictions and in a couple of weeks yeah 14 days exactly we got full gear yeah i'll kick off week of champions three full Absolutely. gear in survivor series john Whoever hosey's that gonna be... will be the new or second time or, or retaining in john hosey's case a uh, big blue champion john hosey is putting that big blue title on the line and you can be the person who takes it off him. One point might be a lot, but one point might not mean anything. You can still get in on our Week of Champions 3 Predictions Challenge. All you got to do, you get access to the Predictions Challenge. You get access to the bonus shows. You get access to the question threads that we do on the show. All you got to do is click Join on YouTube. It's $5 a month. Or you can go to Patreon.com slash Stephen Larson. $5 a month or up or any of the tiers above that. And you get access to all that stuff. So check those out. It's a great way to help support Going In Raw, Friendo Club, and Steven Larson. And uh, and yeah, so there you and go. And one more thing. Hit that like button, please. We got 572 people watching. Please hit that like button. It means a lot to us to have a lot whoa, of likes whoa, when we wait finish these streams. Wait a second. So please, please, Look, ask there's me, please, the bottom of my heart. 573 like people button. watching. There's 113 likes. That math doesn't add up to me, Larson. That That's a little weird here, huh? if that many people are watching and you're not hitting like, what's wrong? Can you not find the like button? Do you not know what it looks like? When were you born? You've been living in a cave this whole time? It looks like a thumbs up. What are you waiting for? Hit the damn button. Or are you a big dummy? Wow. Wow. Yeah, strong words. Thank you, everybody, who have, who have liked thus far. And, and hopefully after you know Steve's a, a, a plea. Yeah. for you to hit that Demand. like button. You, hopefully you will heed that and hit the like button. Thank you. Every like ca counts and it helps a lot. Before we get to the match my match breakdown, I feel like there's a lot more to talk about. We didn't even talk about Solo uh, pretty much pulling a roadhouse on John Cena, <laughs> ripping out his, his larynx yeah. with, what, 10 spikes to the throat? So, yeah, he was spamming that finish button. Uh, this, was, this was cool because Cena had basically destroyed his career, Solo's career, as of last night's SmackDown. Yeah. Uh, with with a voice selling selling the effects, the vocal effects of uh, the spike. Cena within ninety seconds, he timed it. Eviscerated Solo, called him a bargain basement Taz wannabe. Uh, you know, said uh, claimed uh, nepotism. Said your cousin got you the job. Uh, and uh, and Solo had no response for him. John Cena had a pretty good. Well, mic he had a response. There. It was fifteen spikes to the throat. <laughs> His response came in uh, in Riyadh today, and absolutely, I thought this was awesome. Uh, you know, they did a great job of of having seen it, eviscerate him on the mic yesterday. Well, Solo's response was vicious. He hit him with a spike, wasn't enough. Another spike, wasn't enough. Another spike, wasn't enough. He grabbed him by the head, loaded that thumb up, and just started ramming it into his throat. It was brilliant. The only thing I wish they had done was put like have John Cena get some blood in his mouth and up blood in there. Yeah, if this was if this was 2003, they totally would have done that. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That ring would have um, been a mess. No, I thought it made Solo look absolutely great, like a killer, like a monster. And yeah. you got to ask yourself, like, I love that John Cena will show up and he'll talk so much shit. But, like, compare this to the Austin Theory WrestleMania yeah. where nobody really – it didn't really do much for Austin Theory. And I know so much of that was what John Cena had predicted. You have to – after your match with me, you got to prove why you matter – yeah, but like the match itself really didn't do a whole lot for oh, us in theory no, either. The, the 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 match itself was fairly paint by numbers. There mm-hmm. wasn't any drama involved in it. Yeah. Um. And 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 when theory won, you could tell as soon as that bell rang, his arm was raised. Match wasn't good enough to elevate him because mm-hmm. the match was really super mid. Mm-hmm. Uh, that whatever Cena said on the SmackDown or uh, prior or two weeks prior was going to come to pass. Because nothing theory did in that match was going to elevate him based on his performance, mm-hmm. and it just it was a situation where theory got nothing out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. now he's talking about being the 150 million hitman or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. After you know mentioning ad nauseum that he beat John Cena at WrestleMania, it's, it, it it did nothing for him. But this, but this how this match was put together, mm-hmm. the finish of it, the story leading into it. Solo like could not like he was loading up that thumb to Spike Cena as soon as that opening bell rang. Mm-hmm, yeah. He was just waiting. He was chomping yeah. at the bit. Yeah, Any yeah, opportunity yeah. he could to to Spike Cena. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The way that match was booked and executed, it made Solo look like a million bucks coming out of this. It did. Yeah. Where he had yeah. Cena's on his knees and Solo's holding his head up and just spike them repeatedly. It was a great visual. It was it, really it was. was an absolutely phenomenal visual. It, it was really great. And uh and they they did a killer job really making Really make this is a really good moment for Solo. Yeah, it was a really good moment. You know, it'd be interesting if they reference this match, Solo beating Cena, along the way where Solo eventually splits from Roman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, yeah. Like, look, Absolutely. I destroyed John Cena. Destroyed yeah. him. Guy who gets destroyed all the time, J.D. McDonough, uh, got uh, got uh, destroyed by Sami Zayn. This is not a surprise at all. This happened in the kickoff show. They did a kickoff show match, which is kind of rare these days. Yeah, they don't do that very often. No, they don't. Um, and uh, yeah, it, the thing that I love about this match too is that uh, uh, Sammy gives him a haluva kick, which is his finisher. Yeah. But then doesn't want to just finish with that. He finished with a blue thunder bomb. I love to see the blue thunder. I love that goes down in the record books as Sammy Zayn wins via blue thunder bomb, a move he rarely ever wins a match with. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's a beautiful move. And I'm glad that it was used as a finisher this time, but it was really just the cherry on top. He did not need to use that at all. He didn't need to use it, but it was still pretty great that he did it. It was mm-hmm. it was pretty awesome. Yeah, JD McDonough, he, he's a hell of a seller, uh, but uh, man, he is a losing wrestler. I tell you what, he is a losing wrestler at this juncture in his career. So yes, mm-hmm. Sammy gets the win, thus ends kickoff show. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're on to the main card. Show opens up with Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. You know, he's had a lot of really good gear uh, as, as this iteration of the character. This is tops. This is definitely tops. It was like kind of like a Versace pattern, but it was it was gold yeah. and pink mm-hmm. and powder blue, mm-hmm, almost yeah. like a light teal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, if you haven't watched the show, go out of your way and just watch his entrance because the gear, he had two different colored shoes, one pink, one the kind of teal powder blue. Beautiful. It was so good. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It was a really good match. As expected. It was. No, it was it was a really great match. It was it was very physical. Um and uh and it was a proper pay per view match, people kicking out of finishers and stuff. So yeah. uh so Drew spine busters Seth into the corner of the stairs. He's really trying to work that back. And you see some of those heel tennis. I don't know if Drew a year ago would have done that. So he drags Seth back up and sidewalk slams him onto the apron. Both men are in the ring. Drew shakes his head at Seth, and at Seth, he's trying to go for a claymore, but Seth can't get up. Uh, Seth slaps Drew. Drew hits a Glasgow kiss. Seth flips out of a future shock into a pedigree. Gets two with that. Uh, Seth uh, hits a bunch of forearms and an elbow to the back of Drew's head. Goes for a stomp, but Drew catches him belly to belly. Suplex t- does it again. Hits a neck breaker. Kip up. Looks for a claymore, but he runs into a super kick, and then he gets a. St- and then Seth hits a stomp. Covers Drew, but Drew kicks out. That's a rarity these days. Not a lot of people kick out of that. Um, Seth heads up for a Phoenix Splash. Runs into a Claymore. Seth kicks out of that. Not a lot of people kick out of the Claymore these days. Uh, Drew looks for another Claymore. Seth hits another super kick. 
Drew misses another Claymore. Seth hits a pedigree followed by a stomp. Turns Drew over, gets the win clean yep. um, after just an absolutely brutal match. Yeah, it was really good. I like the, the the idea that Drew was he, – he, it's like he, victory is just right there. It's mm-hmm. right there. Title is just right there. All he has to do is just, is just reach out like a couple inches and just, and just get it. Yeah. yeah. But he, he, he is so hasty. Yeah. And he was seemingly at the end here so desperate. Mm-hmm. To get that moment, yeah, right, to get yeah. that huge win yeah. for a championship in front of fans, yeah, that he it got in his head and he lost because he wasn't patient, mm-hmm. yeah, and now he has no one, no one, no one blame for himself, yeah. So, given the brutality of that match, Damian Priest runs down with the referee because he's looking to cash in. He wants to do it. He seems committed to doing it. He's cashing in. He tells the ref, "I'm cashing in." It was pretty funny because he's to the ref because they have the mic down with the timekeeper. He's like. I'm cashing in. I'm going to win. <laughs> Says something like that. <laughs> a big smile on his face. I know. I know. No urgency whatsoever. No. He gives the briefcase to the ref. Sammy Zayn shows up in a hood. He throws Priest into the post, steals the briefcase, runs through the arena. Priest chases him out. Seth just laughs, smiles. Uh, yeah. Backstage, Rhea Ripley walks up to Drew, who had already left through all this, uh, stares at him. Big shrug. Could have helped you here. Uh, I helped you. Walks away. Drew McIntyre's upset. Uh, and then, uh, 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 by the way, as is noted here in our Chris Garrick's notes, Byron Saxon was doing his best Howard Finkel tonight. Yeah. yeah. He did a good he job. He announced it for the show. Yeah, he did a great job. Looked like he was having fun with it because for whatever reason, the other ring announcers didn't uh, weren't able to make it or didn't show or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, he had a big smile on his face doing his Finkel impression. I thought it was pretty yeah. funny. It was pretty funny. Uh, after that, we had the five-way match for the Women's World Championship. Rhea Ripley defending against Zoe Stark, Nia Jax, Raquel Rodriguez, and Shayna Baszler. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it, obviously Rhea Ripley is 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 being booked, and her performance matches it as the top star on Monday Night Raw right now. Mm-hmm. She is she is being angled as the featured attraction on Monday Night Raw. Yeah, and her entrance. Der- Prior to this match, she was the only, I think she was the only person on the show that had a special entrance, wasn't she? Yeah, 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 yeah. Roman's She's entrance was only that, like three minutes, uh, less than four minutes long. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and man, she is a massive superstar. She and looks... then once here's the thing. I wonder if when Roman eventually drops the belt to Cody, I know Cody's super over. But you can just kind of, I feel like this is a situation where like Cody's just going to be over, you know, mm-hmm, and maybe yeah. it might be a little different after he wins the title. Cause I feel like a lot of his momentum and, and is because he's chasing the title. Oh yeah. 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 The question is once he gets the title, what do they do with him? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. But you have Rhea Ripley, who's already a champion. Oh, uh, and it just seems obvious. They're really making the push for her to be face of the company at some point. I, I think you're right. I think that, that they see Rhea potentially as an opportunity and time will tell if it shakes out, if they're, if they're able to do this, but like number one, WWE, I think is, is more about depth than anything. They want yeah. like a number. I only look, I'm sure that they would love to have a Cena, but you know, what's better than one Cena, a whole fleet of Cena's a and they of might. Cenas, yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. And but I, I could see them doing everything in their power to make Rhea like one of their a like the person that'll do the talk shows that'll do this that'll do that. She's got the look. She's got the personality. That entrance, that gear, the makeup, the hair. I mean, she looked like an absolute grade A star, like an absolute star. And given how much she's featured on Monday Night Raw is like the main character of Monday Night Raw. Um, it it wouldn't shock me to see them go in that direction. I mean, it, it no, makes all the all. sense in the world. She really appeals does. to every single demographic yeah. possible. Yeah. Uh, apologies. Logan did have the special entrance. He had the Doom Buggy deal. He did have the Doom Buggy. Did he drive it out? He drove yeah, it out. Yeah, he did. He drove it he out drove to the stage. Out. Or to the okay. Ramp. Yeah, he did. He did. Okay. He did. And what, I, you know, Rio at, going into this match. It's like she she was upset that she had to defend against four other women. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't like, I'm going to not fight. She gets the ring and she looks at everybody and she says, bring it on. Yeah. And that's just not common where, you know, outside of maybe someone like John Cena, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah. where Rhea, as member of Judgment Day, is, is a heel. Mm-hmm. 
but she's not a heel in the same typical way that WWE books their heels. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's great to see, and it just feels like everything is leading to her being one of the absolute foundational pieces of the company. If she's not there already, I think you're right. No, I think you're right, and I think there's, I think there's, I think they're kind of only scratching the surface right now. Mm-hmm. Um, this was great, and I love that you pointed this out during the stream. When this match started, Rhea Ripley was surrounded by all four of them, and she was begging them to come Bring at her. Nia Jax immediately leaves because she doesn't want a piece of that. So what does Rhea do? She takes it to the ones that are remaining. She takes it to the other three. She lays them all out, and then the match is on. And uh, a lot of cool spots here. We had Shayna ba- I, I really like this match. I thought it was very clever. Yeah, I thought it was really good. Uh, we had Shayna Baszler with, like, three submissions. She had, like, the, doing the leg, the leg lock. And then I think like a choke hold on. Uh, she had death locks on Raquel and Rhea, and then Zoe was. No, there? Zoe was out because it looked like okay, she had so like, it was yeah. Nia that or it was. For, I don't know. She had death locks on two, and then and so she had a death lock on Raquel, a death lock on Rhea, and then and that must have been Nia that that would only the, leave Nia. Yeah, yeah, it was Nia that she had the sleeper on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and uh, and everybody everybody got a chance to show off their shit. Um, Dude, I still can't describe that springboard move that Zoe Stark did early in the match. That was weird, and it was awesome. It was super yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, that was nuts. Um, the That's finish crazy. was awesome too. So um, Zoe hits a springboard drop kick and a Z three hundred and sixty on Rhea. Nia breaks it up with the most relaxed kick, uh, and then grabs Zoe, headbutts her down, drags her to the corner, goes for the annihilator, but Raquel's back in, uh, hits a Tahana bomb for a two count. Uh no, that was that a two counter to somebody. I think Zoe broke that, that up. Got, that got broken up. Yeah. yeah, that got broken up. Nobody's kicking out of that anytime soon. No. Uh, so Rhea grabs Raquel. I think it was broken up by Rhea. It was actually broken up yeah. by Rhea. Yeah. Uh, grabs Raquel. Goes for a rip tide. Shane is back in with a Kirifuna on Rhea. Rhea ducks a boot from Raquel and a headbutt from Rhea to Raquel and hits a rip tide on Shayna, but Zoe breaks that up. Zoe then sets Rhea up on top, but Rhea headbutts her and hits an avalanche rip tide. On to the pinfall of Raquel pinning uh, Shayna, I think yeah. it was. <laughs> so so she hits a riptide on the pin, clears everybody off Shayna, pins Shayna, and gets the win. I thought it was a phenomenally creative match. It really was. This The pace of this match never let up. Mm-hmm. Um, There's a lot of really, really creative spots in it. And and the story of, of, of establishing Rhea Ripley as you know the most dominant force in, in the women's division mission accomplished mm-hmm, yeah. especially with that finish yeah right yeah where she yeah. took out three of the four or three of the four co- competitors with one move mm-hmm. yeah yeah and then there was, was that awesome. bit where zoe did that huge jump out of the ring and took out and the cameraman was getting the shot and then and then i guess he got hit and he went down it was good oh, it, it was, was really awesome. effective though to sell kind of like the chaos of the whole moment it was great it was no it was awesome it was awesome it was really good so then uh rio wins Posing with the the title, we get a uh, Cena solo video package, and then they announce uh, officially War Games is returning for Survivor Series. War Games, and then we got John Cena versus Solo Soko. We talked about this quite a bit. Uh, you know, we're giving our overall thoughts on the show. You know, I, I guess in terms of one half, we talked about what this match meant for Solo Story, but what does it mean for John Cena? Him coming in this, trying to prove whether he still had it or not. And I think for about 90, 85, 90% of this match, he proved that he still had it. He just mm-hmm. couldn't finish like the John Cena of old. He mm-hmm. couldn't hit that AA, mm-hmm. you know? He did, that's the only thing he couldn't get done in this match was he hit solo with his finish. Yeah, He yeah, did yeah. everything else. He, yeah. he was in control of this match for spells. Yeah. You know, yeah, this was, this was we, we talked about this, like I said, we talked about this already. This was... In my opinion, like I'm, I'm looking back. I'm, tr- I'm sort of remembering a lot of the what's, what's been going on with Cena since 2018, since the last time, because he shows up for big matches to lose. You know, his feud with Roman Reigns, it was all about getting a roll up. Yeah, all I need to do is three, is three seconds, and yeah. so he was like just trying to roll him up the whole time. Not the most effective thing. That didn't really do a whole lot for Roman Reigns. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Like Austin Theory didn't do anything for anybody. No, um, this is probably the most effective version of what John Cena does now that I maybe we've ever seen mm-hmm. because the, the the match finish was so effective. Like you said, John Cena, he gave Solo pretty much everything he had and yeah. Solo gave him everything he had. It's just in the end, Solo had that spike and a lot of them 
And yeah. Cena just he got completely killed by him. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So the finish uh, solo uh, block getting Avade a hitting a, a Uranagi spinning solo gets a two count there. He looks for a spike, but Cena puts his hands out to block it. He trips up Solo, puts on the STF. Solo gets the bottom rope, uh, breaks the hole. So Cena charges towards Solo and kind of out of nowhere, bang, Simone Spike. Mm -hmm, yeah. So, but Solo's so worn out, he can't make the cover right away. So Cena gets back to his feet, as does Solo, bang, another spike. And then he doesn't pin Cena there. Third spike. And that's when uh, uh, Cena gets to his knees and he just starts <laughs> hitting with spike after spike after spike after spike. I don't know, it's been five or six extra ones. Yeah. And after yeah. all that, Solo finally covers him mm -hmm. to get the win. But uh, Solo escaped out of at least two AAs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like, I guess Cena couldn't get the five knuckle shuffle off. But otherwise, it's like Cena did all his stuff, he got everything in. Yeah. Yeah, this match explained Solo better than anything anybody's ever done. This is like, oh shit! This is what we're up against. Mm -hmm. This is what's happening. Yep. Um. Yeah, I thought I thought it was awesome. And then and then he leaves. Cena gets up, big standing ovation from the crowd. He started. He should have started coughing up blood, but he oh, just absolutely. waves to the crowd. Yeah, I mean, in terms of in terms of, I mean, the question is like, what happens with Cena now? He's uh, he's just done. Like he's just sort well, of well. Apparently, on Instagram, he posted a picture of David Beckham during Beckham's last game. Oh, so okay, all right, yeah, yeah. Not a then, not, you know, not a terrible way to go out if this is his no, actual last match. And I could see John Cena being the type that's not going to make a huge deal about his retirement. You know, right. yeah. if this is oh, his yeah, last yeah, match. Yeah, yeah. He'll just kind of you know he'll go on his back and put somebody over, mm -hmm. and they'll just not show up ever again. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> at least in yeah. a wrestling capacity. Yeah. yeah. Maybe three years down the line when eventually WB is like, hey, we can get you announcing your retirement to pop a number. You're free to do that? Yeah, sure, I could do that. You know, the thing that I really appreciate about this about this latest run is that you and I got to see him versus Dom Mysterio. Mm -hmm. Might have been, well, no, they've had other shows since then. I'm kind of curious what he's done at other... Uh, That's uh, a good question. At other, in other in dark, dark matches. matches. Is it possible you and I witnessed John Cena's final win? Could be. Ooh. Could be. We saw uh, Vince McMahon's last. No, we didn't. That got ruined last uh, this year at WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, huh? yeah. Let me see something real quick. Oh. Yeah, have at it. Uh, meanwhile, they had a, a short but fairly effective Miz TV. Um, Miz welcomed out. I guess he's like a huge movie star in uh, in, in Saudi Arabia. Um uh, I, di I didn't catch his name, but Garrix has it here. Ibrahim Al Hajjaj. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he comes down, uh, shakes Miz's hand. Uh, Miz hypes him up. He hypes him, uh, Miz up. Uh, he asks him about like his latest movie, and then boom, 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 boom. Grayson Waller comes out, and uh, he's like, "It's time to finally have a real star on Miz TV. You're a star. Let's get you on a real talk show." So he starts bringing out his set. He's like, look at these directors' chairs. We need some plants here. And so they start putting plants in the ring. And uh, and Miz is like, you're going to listen to him? I've been here 20 years. He's been here 20 minutes. And Waller says, yeah, mate, it's not 2005 anymore. It's 2023. The auto stock show is the Grayson Waller effect. So uh, Miz is like, no, this would be like if Ronaldo was here and the ball boy was trying to take over. And he's like, oh, you think I know soccer soccer references? So they bicker a little bit. Uh, Ibrahim plays uh, Peacemaker and says, look, I want to be on the hottest talk show WWE has, and that's Ms. TV. And Waller's like, whoa, whoa, this is my show. It's my ring. He says, I'm being disrespected. And then he tells uh, Ibrahim to leave, and Ms. steps up. Uh, but uh, Ibrahim stops Ms. because he's going to do it. Uh, he rolls up his cuffs and his guard, but Waller kicks him down. Miz kicks him. Miz destroys a set, uh, and then Miz throws Waller into a kick from Ibrahim and hits a skull crushing finale. And then, uh, and then uh, the movie star hits a people's elbow on Waller, and the crowd goes. It's a quick segment. It was fine. It was. It was. It was. It was quick. And it was. It was effective. So, mm -hmm. so I'm looking at cage match here. John Cena's had a few dark matches on SmackDown during his run. Only two singles matches, though. Rest were tag matches. 
he also had a tag match with LA Knight at a, at a, at a oh, sorry, no, that was on at Fastlane. What was his other single match? So he had uh, the, the week on SmackDown before we went, he had a dark match, uh, defeated Montez Ford. Hmm. So we witnessed John Cena's last singles victory. Wow. Hey, not too Don bad. Mysterio. Because not after that, he was a tag Don. team dark match. It was him, Cody, and Jey Uso against the Bloodline. And, uh, oh, and LA Knight, too, sorry. It was Cody, Jay, Cena, and LA Knight against Jimmy, Solo, Dom, and Finn Balor. All right, man. I like it. I like it. We might have been there for John Cena's final Singles win. win. Singles win, yeah. Wow, that's cool. We'll see. We'll see. After that, we have the U.S. title match. Rey Mysterio defending against Logan Paul. Logan uh, had a cool video package where he's in a dune buggy and popping wheelies and driving all around, having a good old time. And eventually he's driving through the streets of Riyadh in this dune buggy and drives to the arena, pulls up on the stage, gets out of the dune buggy for his uh, for his match. I mean, Logan Paul has, has taken this pro wrestling thing pretty quick. I think they said on the kickoff show this is eighth. He's only had eight matches prior to this. He's really good. He looks like a 10-year veteran. He does. Out there. He does. And he's really good. And you can tell he really loves it. Um, you know, I mean, I you know, I, I understand the guy's got some controversy in his personal in his outside wrestling world. I get that. Yeah. Um, I think some of the stuff that he's done is pretty despicable. Um, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, he he's taken to the wrestling stuff really, really well. Uh so, anyways, yeah. Uh the finish here. It was a good match. Again, a really good match. There was, um, wasn't there like some crazy, oh God, at one point, Logan freaking saved Ray from breaking his neck because yeah. Ray goes for the spot and he ends up like almost like shooting straight down. Uh, he does some springboard thing where he's shooting straight down. Looks like he's going to land on his head and Logan just goes and grabs him out of midair. Yeah. I wonder if the spot was Ray was going for a moonsault. Logan was supposed to catch him and slam it because that's what ended up happening and mm-hmm. either Ray was a little short on his moonsault, or maybe Logan is supposed to be a step forward mm, uh, mm-hmm. on the catch. Regardless, Logan, reading the situation, leaned forward and grabbed Ray before, yeah, he landed on his head. That could have been the, really bad. The way, and look, I'd, I'd be, I don't it doesn't really matter who's to blame, but the way Ray was falling seemed so, it seemed too, like, vertical for, like, a, the, that, like, it seemed like he under-rotated or something. I don't know. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But in any event, Real, real quick instincts there from Logan to catch yeah. him like that because that could have been yeah, totally. really bad. Totally. Uh, so uh, down towards the finish, somebody from uh, Logan's entourage sneaks down to ringside and passes him some brass knuckles and tries to hide, you know, down below the apron. Really so the cartoonishly, it was really funny. Yeah, it really was. So the ref doesn't see it, but Logan's then sent in the corner by Ray, and in the process of that, the the brass knuckles go flying out onto the floor. Mm-hmm. Good job of the cameraman following the brass knuckles. Like you could see the path of the brass knuckles the whole time. Yeah. So, member of Logan's entourage crawls right next to the apron to try to be out of the side of the ref to get the brass knuckles. But then Santos, in a yellow shirt, uh, jumps over a gorgeous color beautiful of yellow, yellow shirt. Too. Yeah, it's a beautiful yellow shirt. It's almost volt, but not quite. It wasn't quite this brighter. Have enough green in it, but it was, it was mustardy. It was like yeah. It was it was great. But yellow, which is part of Logan's deal. Anyway, so okay. Santos hops the barricade. He grabs the brass knuckles. Uh, and then he, as he's about to chase Logan's dude around ringside, he just very casually puts the brass knuckles right on the apron, right, right in the middle a, of it. Right where a 619 would happen. Yes. And wouldn't you know it, Logan gets tripped up, sent to the ropes for a 619, you know, like the, pre, the, 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 the prelude to the 619. He grabs the brass knuckles. Ray hits 619, goes for the splash for his finish. Logan gets up, whoop mm-hmm. Punch with the brass knuckles. He covers to get the win. New U.S. champ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good match and good storytelling there. Yep. Um, yep. And then I love afterwards Logan going down and talking to Ray, being like, hey, fair is fair. I did what I had to do. And Ray's like, you know what you did. And he was like, yeah, I do. Yeah. I like that. I think that's great. It is. It is. Uh, so then we are backstage. Jackie's interviewing Bianca. Ask about her title match. Um, and she talked about her plan. Part one, making sure Bailey wasn't going to be involved in this bout. Part two, taking the title off EO. Mm-hmm. Um, and she says EO's going to have to fight this fight on her own. I'm getting my title back. Mm-hmm. That match was next. Yeah. 
yeah, and I thought this was I thought this was really good. Bianca coming into this very very confident, you know, maybe too confident, but obviously not accounting for Kyrie Sane showing up. Yeah. Yeah, how um, did she know? Yeah, exactly. Do you think Do you think Bianca has a, a, a subscription to Fightful Select? She should. It's a good five dollars. It's if you're a wrestling fan, it's probably the best five dollars you could spend. I agree. Although the Friendo Club setup's pretty good too. It is pretty good. If you it don't care about good. like backstage news and scoops like that, like we'll give you the scoops. You know, we can we can we can get the scoops from Fightful Select because we have I a subscription so, yeah. there. All right, so you know, I guess it's it's one A one B. <laughs> you can get a friendo club set for five bucks. Also, get bonus shows with these two clowns and our predictions <laughs> challenge. But fightful selects pretty great too, guys. Yes. Uh, so, anyways, uh, EO Holy hits. Shit, a, oh, this is right. Sorry, someone on Twitter said Cena took fifteen Samoan spikes. Somebody in chat said it was ten, but I so I don't know. That's a lot. Well, I saw fifteen in chat too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, All right. That's crazy. Sorry to interrupt. Just, Love to see that's... it. Love to see it. The more, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Made him look great. So uh, towards the finish of the match, EO had a palm thrust. Bianca hit a spine buster for two. Uh, Bianca sent into the ropes as EO slides between them. She's so, EO's so good. She's so smooth. Her outfit was amazing, too. Oh, it was fantastic. Sort of shades of lead a little bit. Yeah. Um, EO hits a springboard. Bianca catches her into a glam slam. Bailey distracts the ref. Bailey's up there, and EO's like, oh, come on. What are you doing? So Bianca knocks her off, then sends EO to the floor and hits a dive to EO. EO runs into Bailey accidentally. As Bianca ducks, then grabs EO and tosses her into the barricade. Bianca rolls her in. Bailey grabs Bianca's ankle. Belair was too, she was too obsessed with Bailey in this situation. She lifts up uh, uh, Bailey for a KOD, maybe on the announce desk. Kyrie Sane shows up stealthily, sort of like, I don't know, like a silent killer type, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, she backfists the shit out of Bianca, throws Bianca into the post as the ref is checking on EO. The ref starts counting. Bianca uh, gets to the count of nine, gets in, and boom, EO hits a moonsault to get the win. Uh, EO and Kyrie start beating Bianca after the match. Kyrie heads up top. Oh, my God. Hits just a killer, killer oh insane elbow. Oh. It was awesome. It EO was and Kyrie, they're hugging, pointing at each other, and Bailey's on the outside looking in like, oh, God, what, is this, what does this mean? I don't like yeah. this. I don't yeah, like she this. didn't like it at all. Yeah. She didn't like it at all. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, then we got Cody, Cody, Cody freaking Rhodes taking on Damian Priest. I looked like an asshole tonight. Yeah, he did look like a jerk. A jerk. A jerk. So this this finish is a Judgment Day match. So of course, it's overbooked. So at one point, Finn comes into the ring, gets on the apron, and then JD slides in the ring to try to help Damian Priest. No, Cody fends him off with relative ease. But then Priest hits the south of heaven. Cody kicks out. So Finn is like waving Dom down. <laughs> takes forever ambulating with no urgency down the ring carrying a chair so about where he gets to the foot of the ramp Jey Uso uh, shows up he takes out Finn he takes out Dom he takes out JD with super kicks Priest is upset uh, and as Jay gets the chair and chases everybody backstage so Cody rolls up Priest gets it to Cody Cutter uh, he does you know the the dusty bionic elbow another two count there cody looks for a crossroads uh priest blocks hits an instant geary uh, cody sends him over the top um eventually leads to a top rope cody cutter uh and then three crossroads to get the win yeah just like that <laughs> just like that cody fends off all of so on the on the adversity scale zero uh, is uh, one I'm sorry one is is not a lot of adversity at all yeah. 10 is a lot of adversity where does Cody land here on this one yes this match this is at best a moderate amount of adversity because she's, he's got Jey Uso back in the month and oh, he's got okay, Sami yeah. Zayn we don't we, I know we didn't see Sami Zayn here but he's got Sami Zayn backing him up too plus he very easily not terribly high plus like you know Judgment Day without Rhea was a little bit they're hapless. Come They're on, let's hapless. just say it. They They're have hapless. been historically and has been proven out hapless if Rhea is not there. They're so entertaining, though. They Finn's, are. They're wildly entertaining. I like Judgment Day a lot. This is maybe a four on Finn's, adversity. Scale. Finn's facial expressions are hilarious. Oh, so great. He's chewing up scenery and it's outstanding. <laughs> he really, he really is. And then Dom comes out just like he said, ambulating, man. He ain't just doing no shit. Urgency. No and he urgency. Just resp he's more obsessed with the crowd booing him than he I is know. like helping out. I know. It's great. 
It's awesome. Zondo says he broke his ankle and somehow he only has like one adversity. I, I completely know. forgot about the ankle thing right there when he asked me that question. Yeah, the that was one mo- mo- like kind of like quick story beat in the match as he yeah. like d- jumped and landed. It's like oh ankle. Didn't really mention it after that. <laughs> no. Oh, no. I love it. I love to see it. Uh, then we got a main event, LA Night. Yeah, yeah. Versus Roman Reigns. I know I, I said earlier on that Roman had a pretty easy day at the office. It's not like that he just squashed L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight fought out of a guillotine, kicked out of a spear. You know, this wasn't a 25-minute, 30, excuse me, 30-minute mm-hmm. Roman main event match like we see in the past. In comparison, it felt relatively short. It did, yeah. Yeah, well, I um, think because the, the, the most recent Roman Reigns, like what? What was the last match he had? It was the Jimmy, the, sorry, the Jey Uso one. That Summer was forever. That was his last defense. Yeah. That was a I, long time. That was a really long match. This, comparatively speaking, was not. What was this, like 15 minutes? Maybe. I thought they said uh, Fightful had the uh, times allowed for the match. I thought it said this was a lot of 20. It went 20 minutes. This went 20 minutes? Okay. It was the longest match on the card. It was a breezy 20. Really? Yeah. I would have thought Seth Drew. That was around the same. 18, 18 20. I think, yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I thought this was this was fine. Like, you know, they, they allowed the, some of these matches. You just have to look. Look, L.A. Knight, yeah, was never going to win this, and he never had a shot. I appreciate that they showed that he could. He hit him with the BFT, and Got Roman needed thing. Jimmy to put his rope, his his foot on the rope. But here's the thing: L.A. Knight in his promo on SmackDown last night was literally setting everybody up for him to lose. Because mm-hmm. this whole thing is: if you take a shot at me, you better put you better put me down because mm-hmm. if you don't i'm gonna come back mm-hmm. so essentially saying if you beat if you beat me you gotta like make sure i never wrestle again mm-hmm. yeah so he's already setting people up for him to lose in that respect you know by framing it in that way well isn't that sort of what we suspect is happening behind the scenes anyways it's like we've yeah, got yeah. this guy who's super hot right now la Knight. let's face it he's a, at this point right now he's still a bit of a meme wrestler like i don't know how long the charm is gonna last and I get the feeling that they know that. I think it's entirely possible that they're able to build him into a character that has longevity. Mm-hmm. I don't know that they think that's a slam dunk, though. And on top of that, he's not the youngest guy in the book, or in, in the world, rather. Um, and so I think it's smart. Do this match now, especially at a Saudi Arabia show. Do this match now, and then see if you can build him up. If he's still really hot by WrestleMania, U.S. title is his, you know? Oh, yeah. And then if he's oh, yeah. still hot a year from then, hey, then you start looking at the options of him, you know, beating a world champion type guy, whoever that might be at the time. Mm-hmm. I don't know mm-hmm. if Roman beats Cody again at WrestleMania. Cody's done. L.A. Knight can finish his story against Roman Reigns in two years after after yeah. Roman beats the, the the Hogan record. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. Could I don't be. really believe that. But no, I don't believe that either. Cody's winning at WrestleMania this year. Uh, So, yeah, Roman hits him with a spear. Uh, Knight kicks out of that, so Roman puts on the guillotine. Knight starts to fade. He eventually fights out, but the Roman puts it back on. Knight drives him into the corner to break it. Roman puts it back on. He starts to fade again, but then Knight kind of flings uh, Roman over him right to the top rope. BFT covers him. Jim Uso puts Roman's foot on the bottom rope. Again, the visual win. If not for Jim Uso, Knight would have had it. So LA Knight rolls out of the ring to go after Jimmy. Keeps on blasting his head against the announce table. Roman comes out to break that up. LA Knight starts blasting his head to the announce table, then pushes him in the ring post. Jimmy's looking for a super kick. Knight catches it. Hits him with a belly and back through the announce table. Then Roman spears Knight through the barricade right after that. Puts him in the ring. Another spear to get the win. Yep. Yep. So, so. a combination of Jim Uso putting the foot on the rope plus Jim Uso distraction. Mm-hmm. Costs LA Knight the match. It's pretty standard bloodline booking so yeah 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 hot route hot route hot route yeah no i feel like Jim, i feel like jimmy uso actually ran the play that was called no audible here i think he did too yeah roman yeah the, the tribal chief whenever he shows up again should be pretty pleased by this i don't know if he's gonna be on smackdown or not but yeah. anyways uh so that's gonna do it for the review want to say thanks to everybody for hanging out with us today we appreciate it we got the rest of our weekend to go have fun now and uh, and we raised a bunch of money for a good cause. The link we is going to remain open for the time being. So if you have it, if you if you have it in you, uh, uh, don't uh, Doctors Without Borders is the charity, and uh, we're trying to get to a thousand dollars. We're at six hundred fifteen now. 
Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, if you got a couple extra, uh, you know, if you got some spare change, maybe consider throwing it our way. Yes, please. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We appreciate it. Till next time, we'll see you around. Goodbye.